What is 26 years? 26 years. It's a long time fighting for your freedom. Dreams, goals, snatched away, gone. 26 years is a long time to lose life. June 14th, 1977, Poughkeepsie, New York. Well, the crime was as gruesome as it gets. You have a 92-year-old woman entering her home late at night, 11 p.m. She's attacked. She has cloth stuffed down her throat. And then more cloth tied around her mouth till she suffocates and dies. When the victim is uh, an elderly woman and she is, is murdered in a, in a brutal way, the community wants to see justice. You have pressure on the police, pressure on the district attorney's office to find the person who did this and to punish that person. On June 14, 1977, 92-year-old Emma Krapser was murdered during a home break-in. Based on a tip from another suspect, the Poughkeepsie police arrested 18-year-old Dewey Bozella and two others, and charged them with the brutal killing. Dewey Bozella's life had been shaped by violence. When he was eight years old, he saw his father beat his pregnant mother to death, sending he and his siblings into foster care. When he was 16, his brother was stabbed to death in a fight. At 17, he left New York City and moved upstate to Poughkeepsie to find a different life. Instead, he faced a charge of murder. He had been in trouble before, but the violent crimes weren't his thing, okay? And he was scared and by the same time determined that things were gonna work out okay. I'm not gonna sit up here and tell you I was a goody-goody. Did I rob and I steal? Yes. But was I a murderer? No. They never found any physical evidence. It wasn't enough to indict him. The grand jury returned a no-bill decision. And that should have been it. That should have been the end of the case. It's six years later. Dewey's gone to community college. He's turning his life around. And all of a sudden, he hears there's a warrant out for his arrest. For what? For a 1977 murder in Poughkeepsie, New York? Six years after Emma Krapser's murder, police came back to Dewey Bozella. Based on the word of two convicted felons, Wayne Mosley and Lamar Smith. Smith was the suspect who originally implicated Bozella in 1977. Mosley was serving time on a felony robbery conviction when the district attorney approached him with a deal. He was offered a get-out-of-jail-free card. If Wayne Mosley testified against Dewey Bazella, Wayne Mosley was released from prison, and that's exactly what happened. For testifying against Bozella, Mosley was released from prison with three years remaining on his sentence. For his cooperation, Lamar Smith was paroled. Dewey Bozella was arrested. He told police he was innocent, miles away from the scene when the crime happened. But in the fall of 1983, before an all-white jury, he went on trial for murder. The prosecutors offered the testimony of two convicted felons, Lamar Smith and Wayne Mosley, both of whom got out of prison in exchange for their testimony. It was all testimonial evidence. There was nothing one could hold, touch, smell, or see that linked Dewey Bazella to the murder of Emma Crapser. Close to over 100 items, nothing had my fingerprints on it, nothing. December 3rd, 1983. The verdict came in. Guilty. 
20 years to life. Everything was taken from me. You had about seven people that were on the jury that broke down crime once they found me guilty. And so I found that to be very strange. I looked at them and I said, it's too late. It's too late. You know, um, you set me away for the rest of my life. It's too late. What breaks a man? Here, it's what every man loses and each man serves. Time. It's being in a box where hopes and dreams can be destroyed. Sometimes there's no faith, there's no hope. I was angry, I was bitter, I was frustrated and I was mad. I had to find myself. To escape the box, Bozella found the ring. In 1985, Bob Jackson, a correction officer at Sing Sing, started a boxing program. I knew that anything that one could implement in the daily routine of the inmates that they would like would help to ease the tension. I said, I'm getting on this. <laughs> I stayed out of trouble. I pushed away from all negativity because it was me fighting against the system. I'm trying to get my freedom. In the ring, Bozella excelled. He became Sing Sing's light heavyweight champion. As part of the boxing program, top amateurs were brought into the prison to box with inmates. In 1989, an undefeated Bozella faced New York Golden Gloves champ, Lou Duvall. He's one of those guys who just kept picking. As the fight got longer, he was coming on harder. And I caught him with a good shot, and I cut him. He stopped the fight because of a cut over the eye. Um, you know, but he was very lucky. I walked out of Sing Sing with like, whoosh, dodged a bullet. What made me proud is that he went on ahead and he won the championship of the world. And showed me that the abilities were there. Ability with no opportunity. But after six and a half years inside, there was a glimmer of hope. An appeals panel ruled Bozella's civil rights were violated in his trial when prosecutors excluded all potential African-American jurors. His conviction was overturned. Dewey Bozella was going back to court. I had faith. I had faith. That's the only thing I had left. I had nothing else left. In 1990, Dewey Bozella was serving 20 years to life for murder. But that same year, his conviction was overturned. And in December, he was on trial again for the murder of Emma Krapser. This time, as the trial neared its end, prosecutors approached Bozella with a deal. They offered me 7 to 14. And I had, at that time, six and a half years in. So I could have went to the parole board six months later and a possibility of going home. He didn't get the words out of our mouth and he said, I didn't kill Emma Crapster, I can't, can't plead guilty. And he came back and he offered me uh, manslaughter. And he said, all you gotta do is sign a piece of paper and tell us how you did it and uh, you can go home. Bozella was 31 years old. He dreamed of becoming a professional boxer, of building a life, of having a family, of being free. Sign the paper and walk out of prison. Hell no. No way. I'd rather die in prison and tell you something I didn't do. I'll tell you if I did it. I'll be mad enough to tell you I did it. Bozella rejected the plea offer. The case went to the jury. If you see a, a, your freedom, okay, it's 
I'll do anything. Just give me my freedom. And Dewey wouldn't do that. On December 13th, 1990, the jury came back. Guilty. Again. I couldn't live with that. I couldn't live with, um, for the rest of my life. Saying I did something that I didn't do, I just couldn't live with that. I couldn't. Back to Sing Sing. Back to 20 years to life. Time takes, but time teaches. As months became years, Bozella took classes and earned degrees, a bachelor's and a master's. As a model prisoner, he was profiled by a local news channel for his participation in the New York Theology Master's program. The experience of learning um, this type of education comes once in a lifetime. In 1995, in the prison's visiting room, he met elementary school teacher Trina Boone while Boone was visiting her brother. At that time, I didn't know what he was in for. I didn't know how much time he had. But I knew one thing, as I got closer to him, there was something there that I said, oh, I really need to meet this person. I was very blunt. And I said, I'm not looking for a girlfriend. But I want a wife. And that's what had me cracking up as I was leaving. I got to the car and I'm like, a wife? You know, I really couldn't put prison and a wife together. It just didn't fit. Bozella called and wrote and courted Trina. In December of 1995, he asked her to marry him. I said, you know, Dewey, I don't, I, I have to think about that. You know, I like you, I like the person that you are, but you're asking me to change my entire life. She did. On March 30th, 1996, in a prison visiting room, they became husband and wife. You know, I did get to visit him. We did get a chance to sit next to each other. It wasn't like behind any walls or anything. To me, I always called it the play marriage. And we did this for years and years and years. You start to get used to it. Married, educated, imprisoned. After 20 years, Bozella became eligible for parole in 2003. I said, baby, I'm letting you know right now, I'm never going to the parole board and tell these people I did it. That means I got to die in prison and so be it. You can walk away now. She said, I ain't going nowhere. Bozella was denied. He went back three more times in 2005, 2007, and 2009. He was denied all three. Parole should have been a rubber stamp and it wasn't for the simple reason that Dewey wouldn't confess to a crime he hadn't committed. Since 2001, he had been writing to the Innocence Project, which helps to free the wrongfully imprisoned through DNA testing. He wrote the same letter nearly every week. After four years of letters, the group finally took Bozella's case and then found out as part of a routine purge by the city of Poughkeepsie, the evidence gathered by police had been destroyed. The blood samples, the hair samples, and everything that could prove my innocence was gone. He said, Trine, that was my last hope. And I said, no, it's still just the beginning. I said, you're coming out of here. I knew he was innocent. I knew that if somebody just dug in there, if somebody just did some more investigation, that they would find something that would overturn that conviction. The Innocence Project believed in Bozella's case and turned it over to a powerful New York law firm, Wilmer Hale. Second year associate Ross Fersenbaum volunteered to explore the facts. I firmly believed from the trial transcripts, from talking to the Innocence Project and from meeting Dewey, that he could not have committed this crime. How in the world were we going to demonstrate that Dewey was wrongfully convicted. The lawyers from Wilmer Hale immediately began re-examining the facts and pursuing old leads. 
They asked to meet with the lead detective in the case, and to their surprise, he handed over a copy of his 30-year-old case file. In the file, they discovered interviews with witnesses that directly contradicted the testimony of Wayne Mosley and Lamar Smith, the convicted felons who implicated Bozella for the murder. Pages of that report were never shown to Bozella's lawyers, and those interviews were never heard at either trial. Here was this evidence showing that Wayne Mosley's story and Lamar Smith's story just didn't make sense, it didn't happen, and yet the district attorney didn't show it to Dewey's lawyers. With these new findings, Wilmer Hale filed a motion to overturn Bozella's murder conviction. On October 14, 2009, that conviction was dismissed. But Bozella was not free. The district attorney would decide in court if Bozella would face a third trial for murder. When the day came to go to court, we really did not know for sure what the prosecutor was going to do. The doors open and Dewey appears in shackles. It's the first time that I had seen him in shackles. Our review of the matter has determined that many of the witnesses who were integral to the prosecution of this case are no longer available. Well, what do you want to do, Mr. Prosecutor? Are you going to take this man to a third trial, or are you going to take this case and let it go? As a result, it's our position that the matter must be dismissed in the interest of justice, and the people so move to dismiss the indictment. Mr. Pazella is ordered to be released immediately. The judge looked at Dewey and ordered the guards to remove the shackles, and Dewey was free. We did it. It's over. I got my life back. I got my life back. Whatever the prosecution and the, and the police did, I'm going to let it go because I got to move on with my life. If I worry about what they did, I'm never going to get in the way where I need to go. After 26 years in prison, Dewey Bozella, now 50 years old, wanted many things as a free man. Among them, to know what it would feel like just once to fight as a professional. It's for me. It's not for anybody else. It's for me. I need to know. I need to know what could have been. After spending 26 years in prison for a murder he didn't commit, Dewey Bozella was finally a free man. He volunteered for a job working as a trainer and conditioning coach. Two, three, six, six, good. Spreading his story. Six, six, good. Sharing his inspiration. In exchange, Bozella had a request. He wanted one fight. I didn't want to fight amateur. I would really like to know what it feels like to be a pro. And I believe that it was something that, you know, I needed to find out for myself. As word of Bozella's story spread, it captured the attention of the national media. And in July of 2011, he was honored with the ESPN Arthur Ashe Courage Award at the ESPYs. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dewey Bozella. I saw a man who, as he walked up to that podium, and he threw his hands up. To me, that was him saying, I told you, I was never giving up. Every day I had to ask myself, how do I survive this nightmare in Sing Sing, a place where hate and anger are the order of the day? Boxing awakened me. I felt free. I was no longer a prisoner. So all the lawyers involved in my case,
Thank you for your dedication and belief in me. And most of all, for making me a free man. May God bless you all. Good night. We're sitting there watching the awards ceremony. I'm, I'm emailing our friends and uh, business partners at uh, Golden Boy Promotions, Richard Schaefer and Oscar De La Hoya. And I said, there's an incredible story. You're not going to believe this. This is giving a man who was incarcerated for all those years an opportunity to live his dream of fighting that one professional fight. Let's make it happen for him. Days later, promoters identified a potential fight for Bozella on the undercard of the Bernard Hopkins Chad Dawson Light Heavyweight Championship fight on October 15th in Los Angeles. I just, you think I ain't gonna jump on this? What? This is the once in a lifetime. I'm not trying to embarrass myself. You know, I know that I have, you know, the age against me. But first, Bozella needed a license to fight professionally in California. No one over 50 years old had ever earned one. Dewey Bozella was 52. After the five-hour flight from New York, Dewey and his wife Trina arrived in Los Angeles for a day-long battery of medical tests, followed by an evening sparring session, all part of his California licensing exam. This is what it's all about. One step at a time. Now, after this, the next one, let's get busy. Rock and roll. When I finally got to L.A., uh, for the next five hours, I took nothing but tests. Didn't even have a chance to unpack my stuff. So we're done? That's a good heart, right? Yes, it's very good. Your EKG, I'll tell you right now, came out completely normal. You will be undergoing an MRI of the brain a little bit later today. Right now, you're weighing in at 205 with clothes. Dr. Gluckman will be coming in here to do a neurological examination on you, an extensive neural on you. How many fights do you think you've had all together? I had 10. 10 in, in prison? Mm -hmm. yeah. Once you've completed this, I will email all this over to the state of California. Okay. And then that way, within two weeks, you will get a federal ID number. Providing you pass your evaluation tonight, show the inspector that you've got, you have the skills of a boxer and that, you know, you can defend yourself in a boxing ring. Anyone has a right to be evaluated. We'll see today when we put him through these number of drills if he has been doing what he has said. Because if he has been doing what he said, then we will know right away. What we're going to do now is go over what we're going to do exactly in your evaluation to become a pro athlete in the state of California. You're going to do five minutes on the jump rope. Time. Five minutes on the heavy bag. Time. Five minutes on the speed bag. Five minutes on the mid. And then you're going to do three three-minute rounds sparring with Mr. Carthorn here. You're going uh, to do all that work and then go out and spar with that man? I've been up since 3 o'clock this morning. Correct. Yeah. Again, we're just doing what we were told to do. We were told to come here and do an evaluation, and that's all that we're doing right now. So we're, we just follow the same protocol we do with every athlete in California. Okay. After the four phases of cardio testing, Bozella entered the ring to spar with a man 22 years younger professional heavyweight, Andre Carthron. Let's use control, okay, it's not full contact, maybe 70, 80%, try not to hurt each other, but we gotta see some skills. I could see that the opponent, the guy that he was sparring with was, uh, Really going kind of wild on him. I made a decision to just walk out at a certain point. 
In my heart, I knew he was dead tired. Don't hurt each other. Just control. Cardio looked good, technique looked good. In terms of how was it rated between one and 10, that'll be determined uh, by our office in Sacramento. I believe 99.9% .9 I proved them that I did it. So I believe that I should get it. I'm this close from getting that fight. I'm this close. Here we go. I think he was feeling like, all right, is this a third trial? Because his life was in somebody else's hands again. Hey. That was a little nervous, I'll be honest. Hello? Hi, Dewey. Che Guevara, Athletic Commission. How you doing, Che? I'm doing well. OK. First of all, I thank you for coming to California and uh, doing the evaluation for us. Yeah, I appreciate you giving me the chance. I put together a letter after going through everything, and I'm going to go ahead and read right off the letter, and then we'll go from there with questions. Okay. Dear Mr. Bozella, this letter shall serve us notice that your professional boxing application is currently denied. Whoa. This action is being taken based upon your performance and evaluation process performed at Strong Sports Boxing Gym in Los Angeles. Despite receiving high cardiological reviews, it was the actual sparring stage of the eval that raised concerns to it. It was reported that you had difficulty with lateral movement in the ring. It was noted that you showed uh, questionable reflexes and lacked adequate defense and footwork. If this isn't be all end all, you have an opportunity in the next month to hone your craft a bit more, work on some of the things we just listed off, and possibly come back and do another evaluation to try and uh, make it your scheduled bout on October 15th, if that's something you would like to do. Uh, um, Dewey just went to the men's room for a minute. Uh, this is his wife, Trina Bozell. How are you? I'm doing great, Trina. Is he okay? I, I hope so. I know that the first portion was stunning, probably to Dewey. Right. The last portion, we gave him hope. We gave him some avenue to hone his skills and be reevaluated. Okay. We're very confident that we came up with the correct evaluation in that he doesn't, at the present time, show the ability to be at that level. All that for nothing, man. They could have just did that from the beginning. All that for nothing. All that work for nothing, man. No, it's a bunch of bullshit. It's the way my life has been, man. Always a struggle and conflict. I'm gonna try it again for. It's over with, man. They killed it. It's over with. So you, you're saying you guys will give him another shot at this evaluation. I do agree that you probably didn't get the best out of Dewey, and I only believe that it's fair that he come in fresh. And then if you still have your same uh, outcome, I think that that this was a fair decision. So this letter that you're sending will tell Dewey the exact things he needs to work on. Yes, lateral movement, it talks about his defensive skills. Those are the areas that we saw that... that uh, well, how can I work on lateral movement, man, when you ain't get when you ain't, when you got me doing over 25 minutes of work? I know, Dewey, and now we're how doing... Can I, can I do, okay. Where's that yeah. fair? The man didn't do anything. I bust my butt, man. He, he didn't do anything. He sat there for the whole half an hour I worked out. And then you're going to put me out there with a heavyweight when I'm a cruiserweight. He got me by at least 25 pounds. So he's got the advantage. You took the advantage away from me. If you didn't take the advantage away from me, I guarantee it's a whole different fight. I probably would have dropped him. But how can I drop him if you take away my energy? He even said, yo, maybe you want me to fight this man and spar with this man after all the work you did with him? And y'all said, go out there and do it. And that's exactly what I did. He didn't beat me, I beat him. Dewey. That's what I'm, brother. It hurts, man. It hurts. You're taking away my dream. You're taking away the only thing I got left. And you killed it. Trina, put him. Trina, are you on the phone? Yes, I am. Okay, he needs to settle down right now. Okay. I appreciate your time. No problem. Thank you. You have a good day. You too. They're going to give you another chance. Man. It's over with. Nope. It's 
She's over with, Trina. Nope. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not thinking about it no more. Can't quit now. It's not quitting. It's just the reality. Reality is they're going to do the same thing again. Reality the is thing this. Again. Doing nothing comes easy for you. That's, That's reality. reality. I'm tired of that. Shit. I'm just sick of it. Nope. You got 30 days. 30 days for what? You need to find a trainer. That Man. was just the story. That's how it is. Remember how you say either you lay down or you get up and fight. Which one are you going to do? It's not laying down. It's just the simple fact is they don't want me to fight. Prove them wrong. Yes. You're my husband who says never give up. I'm not giving Prove. up. I'm pissed. Well, pissed ain't going to do it. I got it always, all, every Fast single time. Life. Struggling conflict. There you go. Struggling conflict. Right. Struggling conflict. I always got to bust my ass and prove something. That's right. His quote to this world is to never give up. You're telling the world to never give up and you're going to give up? You can't give up. Let nobody take away your dreams. He deserves another chance. Dewey Bozella was denied a license to fight professionally in California. But he was given a second chance, another licensing test to be taken in one month. This time, he would train in Philadelphia with a man who understood where he'd been and what he'd been through. The difference between me and Dewey and my story is that um, I, I did what I did and I paid my time. This is an innocent man. At 17, Bernard Hopkins was serving time for nine felonies. Like Bozella, he discovered the prison boxing program. After his release, he would go on to earn the world middleweight title and successfully defend it a record 20 times. I never knew this man personally. He never knew me, but the connection is if I can give this lifelong dream that could have been and was taken away, give him the opportunity to do it. Relax your body. Relax your legs. The work began immediately at the hands of Hopkins' longtime assistant trainer, Danny Davis. I thought I knew something about training. I found out that I, please, I was way off. I thought he wouldn't get past the first eight exercises. And when he did, I said, this is probably not going to work. Wait, let's take a break. I was thinking, I'm like, wow. Wow, man, we really can we really do this? Take a deep breath, take a deep breath. When we got in the ring, that second round, he was tired, he was pretty much sprunk out. Too slow. Too slow. Too slow. And I told him we're gonna do two more rounds, and he turned around and he didn't complain. And he started dancing on his toes, and he started getting loose. That was the deciding point that I wanted to train him for this fight. After seeing him today, we're going to make some noise. In training, as in boxing, will is the single way. The road. The ring. The rounds. Will is the path and the passage that every fighter follows to get where he wants to go. He's not the average 52 year old. I know a lot of 52 year olds and Physically, they ain't in good shape. I know a lot of 46 years old, 35 year olds, that couldn't keep up with this man. Bernard Hopkins is a teacher of the game and a student of the game. And Dewey is in a perfect position to learn everything there is to know about boxing. And he's learning it from the best. This is where I gotta stand back up like a man and make it happen. One minute rest, three minutes. Okay. Just like the fight. All right. All right. So he can get acclimated. Right. 
Bozella's biggest hurdle was climbing back in the ring to spar, mastering the portion of the test he failed. They need to see action. You understand? Come on, you gotta put something on them punches, man. They too slow. You ain't passing no tests like that. Yeah, get off the road. Yes, sir. Listen, Drew, that's what I want. I want pressure, right? And I want you to make his ass fight. See, this is the round he got it. I want him to get through. Keep that pressure on him. If you're going to make him or break him, keep that pressure on him. See, can he handle that pressure? See, can he handle that pressure? See, can he handle that pressure? Excellent. Excellent. Keep that pressure on him, young boy. Rough him up. Let me see he blocks his way out of that corner. Stay in that body, Drew. Stay in that body, Drew. Keep working, Drew. When we go in front of the commission, they're going to see that 52 is just the age. Even if they said no, I'll learn to let it go like I learned to let go of everything else in my life. I just want to know that I gave one zillion percent, and then I can live with that. A month after failing to get his license, Bozella was back for his second and final chance. If I let myself down, I let a lot of other people down as well. They took the chance on me. With Danny Davis in Philadelphia to work with Hopkins, assistant trainer Wendell Chavis led the workout. Golden Boy president Oscar De La Hoya came to see the fighter firsthand. He wanted to see if this is worth it because his reputation is on the line. Do your thing. So you've been to this before, um, so what we're looking for is being able to defend yourself. That's my main concern, obviously, is safety in the ring. The first portion, we'll do some five minutes of jump rope, get the blood flowing a little bit. Go. I don't wish for the commission to look at his speed, at his punching power. One, two, three. I want them to focus directly on his heart and think about what he has accomplished, what he has gone through to be right here today. It doesn't get any tougher than that. After looking strong in the cardio testing, Bozella returned to the ring to confront the portion of the test he failed the first time. There you go. There you go, baby. There you go, baby. This is it. Use that footwork. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is it. Give it all you got. Time. Hey, Dewey, let's go talk real quick. Okay. The concern is uh, the incoming jab. Okay. I noticed you were kind of taking those, even though we we're going at about 80%. If you can improve on that, you got a couple more weeks prior to your camp and prior to the fight. You ready to go? You give it to me? You got it, man. Go! Oh! Thank you, man. I finally, I finally, I finally got it, man. I finally got it. What's up, homie? Oh, it's approved. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's what we do. Oh, yeah. It's October 15th. October 15th, baby. October 15th. Okay. October 15th. Okay. It's approved. It's approved. Hello? Turn it up. Yeah. Can you hear me? All right, I, I want you to know they I passed the physical. They gave me my license. <laughs> I did it. They said I couldn't do it, and I did it. Now, let's move on to the next stage. 
which is fighting. It truly is my honor to be presenting to you, making his professional debut, Dewey Bozella. Dewey. I want everybody to know this just wasn't handed to me. You may think that this is a charity thing, but this is not a charity thing. I'm out here to win. And I'm going to give you one zillion percent of what I got at 52. And I'm not busted. I'm not busted. So I earned mine. He had exactly zero professional fights. He was 52 years old. But on October 12th of 2011, three days from his pro debut, Dewey Bozella went from captivating story to humble star. Hello? Is this Dewey? Is this Mr. Pre yes, this is Mr. President? Yes, sir. How are you? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm, I'm good, man. I'm good. I, I heard about your story, and I wanted to call and say good luck in your first professional fight. Ah, oh, man, that's an honor. Thank you very much. Everything you accomplished while you were in prison uh, and what you've been doing since you got out uh, is something that you know, I think all of us are very impressed with. Now, you're certain there's only going to be uh, one fight you're going to fight, huh? Yes, absolutely, yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, I wish you all the best. Take care. Okay, Mr. President, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Talking about pressure. <sighs> I think he'll toss and turn all night until this fight is over. I believe he'll go back to his childhood. And I believe he'll think about all that he's been through. And I think that's what he's going to hold on to when he go out in that ring. This is a guy who I met in prison who probably had no right having any hope. And there he'll be standing in a boxing ring as a professional boxer. I'll have just enormous pride and a little bit of fear. I've been lying to you if I say I'm not nervous. My expectation is to go in there, to cheer him on, and for him to walk out of there victorious. And that one fight, no more fights. He has nothing else to prove. Okay, guys, let's go. In my heart, I'm going to give all that I got. And that's where I can say to myself, okay, I did what I needed to do. I gave my all, and I can live with the consequences. And now, ladies and gentlemen, do we? The lights, the announcer calling his name, it's going to be very emotional. He's going to ask himself, can I do this? All those years that you were in prison, thinking about being free, this is your moment. Dewey Bozella in the black trunks with green trim, 52 years old. Spent 26 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit. Let's go! Let's go! Get that body! Get that body, Dewey! Hasn't landed anything really significant here and has taken a couple of right hands from Larry Hopkins. Bring it. 
Bring it. You can't hurt me no more than I've already been hurt. Black eye, busted lip, busted nose, broken rib. You can't hurt me no more. You can't. I've been knocked down so many times, I had no choice but to get back up. I was laid down and died. And I ain't ready for that yet. So I'm gonna fight. Pozella has been the more active fighter. He's landed four or five clean body shots. For this moment, I have him winning the round. That was a better round. You giving me good jazz, but let this damn right hand go. Fox out of there's a chance, and he lands a left hook upstairs. It's a great what if. But going out there at 52, you know, it's like, look what I could have been at 25. They may have taken all my dreams away years ago, but this one dream, nobody's gonna take away. How we feel? Good. How we feel? Good. Okay then. Let's finish the show now. The crowd wants Bozella to finish the job. It's the body shots that are doing it, Jim. He's trying. He's gonna give it all he's got. Go! Come on, Dewey. This is fabulous. Fabulous. He has worn Hopkins out. Annihilated it. A huge win. Never gave up. Your winner, Dewey. I'm coming home, I'm coming home Tell the world I'm coming home Let the rain wash away All the pain of yesterday People said you couldn't do it, I proved them wrong Never gave up That's what I'm wanting to see from the heart